Welcome to a series called The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to see what it is we can expect to happen and what it is we should be doing in the end times of the time Jesus refers to as the end of the age. And where we are in this book of Revelation is we're at the end of chapter 16, where God is pouring out his final wrath on the earth. It will complete the wrath of God. There will be no more wrath uh, on the earth. And this is in the form of seven plagues being poured out of seven bowls by seven angels. And we've been on the seventh uh, bowl, and we've been there for a few weeks now. There's a lot going on in the seventh bowl, but we're going to wrap it up today, and we're just going to pick it up where we left off there. Revelation 16, starting verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. Now again, there's quite a bit going on, and we've been on these passages for at least the last four episodes, talking about specifically the earthquake. But once that earthquake is completed, it says specifically, And great hail from heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. It's very important that we don't just say, well, it hailed and it was terrible. <laughs> like, it's very important. We talk about God brings hail for a certain reason. And there's, there's a purpose for this hail. And it's a much deeper purpose than one might think. Beyond that, this hail is ridiculous hail. Uh, you know, they, they're not kidding when they say they haven't seen anything like this before. Because what they're saying is that each hailstone weighed about the, the weight of a talent. <laughs> Let's talk about the weight of a talent for just a second. That, that's not the point of this video, but let's talk about this hail first. Because the word there they use is talantia. Um, and it's the first occurrence they've ever used in the Bible. It's the first time that word talantia is used in the Bible to refer to a talent. Now, when Jesus talked about the talents, he used the word talanta. Um, which is really more of a coinage. It's kind of a definition of, a, of an amount of money where talantia is a weight. It is the weight of a talent, which many would argue ancient Hebrew talents or Greek talents, depending on how you look at it, really was about, depending on what you read, between 50 and 85 pounds, the average being about 75 pounds. However, many interpretation of this word of the Bible, if you read it, will actually say weighed about 100 pounds, not the weight of a talent. So we're looking at somewhere between 50 and 100 pounds, probably about 75 pounds of this talent, of these hailstones. So imagine a 75 pound hailstone falling, but it's raining hail. Um, and this hail went on and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. Now, Picturing these 75-pound hailstones falling from the sky in a great storm on the earth clearly is going to kill everything that's remaining on the earth that's not tucked away inside a cave or seeking some kind of shelter. So let's kind of talk about why God does this first and foremost. If we look at the last time, or we look at the times that he's brought hail, as a plague, because the plague itself, the seventh bowl, the plague seems to be the hail. The earthquake, you know, there's lots of prophecies of this earthquake, and there's a lot of causes, and we've talked about the earthquake, but the plague itself doesn't seem to be the earthquake. The plague seems to be the hail. And if we look at Exodus, when this happened before, uh, Exodus 9, we're going to kind of read through this because there are some critical things that God says here or that takes place here that allow us to truly understand what it is God is doing. So we're going to go to Exodus 9, starting in verse 13. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For at this time I will send all my plagues to your very heart on your servants and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. 
Now, if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. So here we're at the seventh plague of Pharaoh. Now they had 10 plagues, but ironically it happens to be the seventh plague as well. But there's something that, that God is saying here that's very particular. One, he's saying that I did not smite you because then the world would think that, you know, you just kind of lost your power and that you just went away as a people group. But I raised you up, Pharaoh. He's talking to Pharaoh. I raised you up specifically and gave you the authority to be over at the time the greatest civilization on the planet simply because... Indeed, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. It's about declaring the name of the Lord. The same reason why after, when the bowl was poured out, he said, I caused this. It's so we know this is God doing this. It's very clear to show his omnipotence that he is in charge. He is very in charge, and there is a cost to your sin, and it is in the form of of plagues. And let's pick it up there because there's still quite a bit more we can get out of this uh, story with Moses. 17. As yet you exalt yourself against my people and that you will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause very heavy hail to rain down, such as had not been in Egypt since its founding until now. Therefore, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field, for the hail shall come down on every man and every beast which is found in the field and is not brought home, and they shall die. He who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his livestock flee to the houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. So here, God warned Pharaoh. He said, you know, if you don't want all your stuff to get destroyed, I, I highly recommend you bring them in. Those who believed in God heeded the warning of the hail and they brought their livestock into the houses. This is just another example on why it's so important to understand Revelation. If you're out when 75 pound hailstone is coming down because you're not heeding the word of the Lord, you're going to die. There is no other answer for buts about this. So let's keep going. 22. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man, on beast, and on every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod toward heaven. The Lord sent thunder and hail and fire darted to the ground, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. This sounds very familiar to what we just read. Let's pick it up in 24. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, so very heavy that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail struck every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. So not only did he make a way for them to escape, he made actually a place for them to escape as well. But God uses this hail to show himself omnipotent, to show he is God, to pass judgment on sin, but he also uses it for warfare. We'll, pick it, we'll take a look at Joshua 10 and 11 where this happens. Here Joshua is chasing the Amorites and it says in 11, And it happened as they fled before Israel and were in the dead of Beth Haran, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Zekah, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstone than those whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. And this isn't just an isolated incident. God specifically stores up hail for these specific times, for the times of his second coming, for the times of freeing the Jews from uh, Egypt. He, and we know this to be true because he told Job so. In Job 38, God is talking to Job and he's showing in his omnipotence. And I, I love sarcastic God because he's saying, you know, where were you when I created the earth? You've been here forever. Surely you know. But he says something very peculiar starting in verse 19. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? And darkness where is its place, that you may take it to its territory, that you may know the path to its home. Do you know it? Because you were born then, or because the number of your days is great, have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? 
So he is reserving this hail. You know, everything that we learn in the Word of God is, is timeless. It, he tells us everything we need to know. And even though Job is the, a very ancient book, probably the oldest complete text on the planet, definitely the oldest book in the Bible, he told Job that he is storing this hail. Have, and he's saying, have you seen the storehouse of hail that I have reserved for this specific time? So even though we're reading this in this ancient text, it definitely applies to us and what we are going to see in the future. Because even Isaiah brings this up in Isaiah 28 to behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm like the flood of mighty waters overflowing. Who will bring them down to the earth with his hand? It is the almighty God that is doing this. And it can no longer be this thing. We have to separate out what is God doing and what is man doing? These hailstones are from God. The earthquake is from God. The thunderings and the lightnings and the fire from the sky, it's all from God. And we have to see it. And that's what this is all about because he is a man of war. And he stores up these hailstones specifically for times of war that have been reserved for him to intervene, which of course will be the end times, but also to show that he is God that he is God, omnipotent God, a warrior. So if we read that one last time. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. There were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Love to hear your thoughts on all this. We're going to jump into babylon here this next episode and we'll be on there for probably many months but love to hear your thoughts on this hailstone put it in the comments below if you like this video click like and subscribe if you feel called to support this channel through patreon that link is also below but the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests so never hesitate to send that in thank you for watching this episode of god family and guns and as always love god love your family and love guns